Hi, my name is Evan Williams, and I am a customer success leader and advisor with Growth Molecules. In honor of Black History Month, this four-part interview series, Black Voices in Customer Success, will highlight accomplished leaders and executives in customer success. My guests have decades of experience and valuable insights to share. If you're interested in learning more about how to elevate your career in customer success, what are the traits of a great CSM, and insights from tech veterans, this is the series for you. Hi, Anthony, thank you for joining me today. I appreciate your time. Not a problem, thank you. So I see that you have a very diverse background in engineering, customer success, professional services. Uh, would love to hear a little bit more about your background and uh, how you've ended up in, in your current role What's brought you to, to Givelify. Oh, wonderful. It's a very good journey for me. Uh, started out as, as a computer science major, got connected with a couple of uh, five guys, I call them, the my five guys that done, we've now done three startups together. Uh, the last startup turns out was a transition for me. Um, I was leading engineering, kind of got burnt out in engineering. Um, I didn't know it, know it, but everyone else seemed to know that I got burnt out in engineering. And so those five founders had a very heart to heart conversation with me and said, you know, maybe leading engineering in this company is not the right thing for you. Maybe there's something else you can do. And so from there, I made the transition to start, uh, or actually not start, but continue our training department. From training went to consulting, from consulting went to support, from support went to enterprise architecture, which really became technical customer success. From there went on to then lead all of customer success, everything post signature for that startup. From there went through acquisitions to keep going up the ladder within customer success to finally becoming chief customer officer at Remini Street. Um, and now I'm the senior vice president of customer success and experience at Givelify. So it's been a long but fun journey. That's great. And I see there's a, a mixture of the hard skills that you have as an engineer with also the soft skills, working in consulting, training and services. Uh, so how has it really helped you to be successful in your current role? And how do you uh, implement a lot of those uh, skills in your day to day work? I actually think that journey uniquely qualified me for this role. In customer success, there's different flavors of customer success, but to really holistically drive customer value, you have to be someone that's very comfortable with people, with those soft skills, with technology, of course, understanding and how to communicate the value of technology and data. Particularly if you're working in customer success in the SaaS environment, you live off data. If that's all that's really what you have to move that many customers at scale you have to go where the dot data leads you and so having those three elements in my background i think it is an asset to to what we're doing here at givelify great and if you wouldn't mind sharing a little bit more about you know the mission at givelify and, and what you all are working on sure givelify if i can explain it the way i love to explain it givelify is the the, the marketplace for retail philanthropy. It's where people who want to donate to organizations, uh, these are nonprofit organizations, places of worship, churches, mosques, temples, um, or even what we call secular nonprofits, those nonprofits that are not necessarily religious affiliated, um, but where you have these donors that want to give and you have the organizations that want to receive those donations in order to make the world a better place. Our job at Givelify is to help them find each other, to provide the right tooling, the right positioning, the right information, so that those donors can give to the departments or to the organizations that really want to move the world and change it. Uh, that's really our mission, is how do we help the world do good? I love that. And, and if you could share, there's gotta be a lot of rewarding moments in your in your day to day work, can you tell me a little bit about some of the most rewarding times that you've had in your your time at Givelify? Really, it's just talking to customers, talking to the number of customers um, that that we deal with on a day to day basis, and see the commonality. Uh, when you deal with nonprofits, as much as the mission is the goal of the nonprofit, the money, the fundraising is the engine that allows them to accomplish all the good that they do. So, being able to work with some of the uh, largest organizations in the world, some, some of the largest churches in the world, some of the, the best places of worship, mosques, etc. 
to, to work with them and be able to share the learnings across the field. They may implement it a little differently. They, their motivations may be a little different, but the techniques of raising money really about the same and they really scale. Now, back to your career, if you could tell us a little bit more about what have been some of the most pivotal points in your career, in your progression to where you are today. I have to say there are two that stand out. Um, I discussed one earlier where I moved over from engineering into kind of the customer success track. Um, that was very pivotal for me because it was a, a way for me to realize I actually had other things or other things of value that I didn't really know. I, I actually turned out to be good with people. Um, as an engineer, I didn't know that. So that was one of the things to realize that you can be a technical geek. You know, you can be a nerd. You could be a, a software developer, so to speak, uh, that loves writing code. I still write code, but still have a personality and be good with customers. My image of a software developer at the time was someone that basically, and I'm going to be honest, drank a lot of beer, got their requirements underneath the door, wrote code, ate pizza, played video games, and just the code just came out the other end. Um, and maybe that's where I was, you know, early in my career. But as I continued to grow, I realized that the way to get business done is you have to get out of the code and actually start talking with people, uh, understanding the value you're delivering by writing the code. That's where uh, that was a very pivotal thing for me to see the other side of the software development business, so to speak. The second, um, really, I have three mentors that I, to this day, say have impacted my life. And so interacting with those three have really, really been beneficial. One, uh, it, it, the one I always lean on the most, his name is Doug Johnson. He was the chief operating officer at, at Pentaho. Um, he has been so instrumental in positioning me um, and, and even seeing things in me that I didn't see. I always have to applaud my gang of five, those five founders um, led by Richard Daly uh, that, that helped me, ca caught me really at the early part of my career and gave me a foundation. And then there's always Rex Ralph, my executive coach that I've used for years. Um, he's always there in the background off and on. So being able to call him and have conversations with him has always been something that I would say has been pivotal in my career. Those three things, those four things, if you would, those three people that I mentioned and just that movement into the customer space to understand the business side of software development, those have absolutely been pivotal to helping me achieve what I've achieved. And I love that you're talking about how important it is to, to have a mentor when it comes to furthering your career and your professional development. For anyone that's thinking about mentorship or how do I find a mentor or where do I go and, and how will this person help me out? Do you have any advice that you would give on how to find a mentor? The first thing is think about the people you interact with today. Your mentors don't always have to be someone that's been there and done there, you know, been that, been there, excuse me, and done that for the last 20 years. You may find someone just in your day-to-day -day walk that has an experience from which you can learn. So think about the people you interact with every single day. What can you learn from them? Who can share some insights, some perspectives that you might not have had? Um, definitely look for some people that are uh, kind of farther along in their career than you are. Um, and it may not even be in the same industry, but just find someone who may have walked down this journey before. Um, but then the other piece is just continue to grow your network. It, it's amazing how many people have in their desire, kind of like as they mature, the desire to feed back into the profession or to pour back into others. And so you may find through networking on LinkedIn and other places, um, some executives that are willing to bring you underneath their wings, so to speak, and just, just have conversations with you from time to time. Um, you don't need a formal necessarily executive coach or a formal agreement. You just need people that you can have a conversation that's willing to um, pour into you to show you the ropes or to give you the benefit of their experience for you then to kind of just open your horizon, open your eyes to what is the possibilities, what are the possibilities and different ways of seeing things. That's really what I, re I, I found from all of my mentors, from Richard Daly all the way up to Doug Johnson throughout my career. Uh, Rex Ralph, they've always been able to open my eyes to things that I did not see. 
Yeah. And so those folks that have been successful are then looking to, you know, to pay it forward and to help those that are, that are coming up and to lead, lend their help and support. So if you are looking for a mentor, you know, not to be shy about approaching someone who is in a position that you'd like to be in to, to seek their assistance and guidance. Absolutely. I still do it today. Um, there are people on the internet or in LinkedIn, on Twitter and every place else. Um, the, the wonderful thing about social media, you now can connect with people that you might not have been able to connect with before. And so if I've read a book, I go follow the author on Amazon. And then I'm reaching out to the author saying, hey, I like this packet passage of your or the point you're trying to make. Can, would you mind having a conversation? Well, not, they don't always respond, but you never, you know, you can never celebrate the victories when you never took the chance, so to speak. So you have to take those chances and just reach out. You never know. Uh, there's a couple people today that I look to as mentors that more thought leadership leaders, I guess you would call them versus mentors. But I still reach out to them when I have ideas or when I have things I want to talk about or or just looking for a different perspective. Um, so absolutely reach out to people, connect with them. And for someone that's looking to to break into customer success or that's already in customer success and is looking to take that next step into customer success leadership, what advice would you give to those people? It, it's interesting because I do mentor others in customer success myself. And one of the things I tell them is bring their entire selves, if you would, into customer success. A lot of people will transition into customer success and they have other backgrounds. Like some of them, my recent mentees have backgrounds in education. Well, there's a whole industry in technology that serves the education space. Bring your experience in education into customer success. Don't leave it at the door, at the skills of customer success, but bring your experience in education with you and use that experience to make you a better customer success manager or any other field in customer success, CS ops, or even customer marketing. Um, Your knowledge of the industry, your knowledge of what it means to sit on the other side of the computer, trying to get the things done that educators need to get done or whatever your background is, is valuable. We can teach anyone the techniques of customer success. We can teach the principles. But what makes customer success very, very potent is that uh, our customer success uh, uh, practitioners very potent is their knowledge of the industry, their knowledge of the customer. So if you've been a customer, bring that with you. (laughs) Go through some training like uh, with, with, with Growth Molecules, SV Academy, or wherever else you find customer success training. Go through that training, but bring your entire history with you. Don't leave it at the door. Yeah, that, that's a great point. And I hear from so many people that I talk to that are looking to get into customer success to say, well, you know, I don't have any relevant experience or I don't have, uh, you know, the number of years that are required for this role, but they're coming from a sales role. They're coming, as you mentioned, from an education role. They're coming from uh, another area or maybe a technical role where all of these little pieces, the, these interactions that you've had with customers, whether you're working in sales, education services, you can bring those skills and directly translate those into being a great CSM. Absolutely. I think it's important to remember to, to not sell yourself short, right? You do have uh, relevant qualifications. So thinking about you know what it is that makes a good CSM and, and what, what are the areas where you've used these skills and these competencies in the past and really highlighting those for you know, your potential employer. Absolutely. I always tell people, everyone's in customer success, whether you believe it or not, everyone's in customer success. Everyone's dealing with customers. And so whether or not you're dealing with customers by their prospects or you're dealing with customers after the after the sale, or maybe you've been a customer, but in every sense of form uh, or, uh, you know, no matter how you look at it, everyone's in customer success. Yeah, that's right. I couldn't agree more. And uh, I'll throw you a little bit of a curveball here, but... Anthony, if you had a superpower, what would you say that the superpower that you have is? If I can say my superpower, um, I would have to say, uh, okay, I'm gonna have to geek out a little bit. I am a a great fan of anime. One of the things, one of the shows, and some people don't call it anime, but I love it, is Avatar, The Last Airbender. 
you know, the first season, not, not, not the, or the, with Aang, not with Katar, with, with, with yeah, the, not that one, but Aang. <laughs> oh, and there's a, there's a, there's a character in that series by the name of Toph. Toph was a, uh, 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 uh earthbender. And what I like about her is that she was, she had a certain grit, a certain resiliency, a certain stubbornness um, that made her great at what she did. That's kind of where I am. I have to say it's both a blessing and a curse. Once I have my mindset on something, I can be very, very stubborn and I remove almost every obstacle out the way to achieve it. There's a tenacity that comes with that. I, I was joking with uh, the CEO at Givelify as we were talking about strategy this year. It's like, listen, my model this year is that there's a train moving. You're either on it, under it, or out of the way. You get to choose, but there's a train moving. I'm going to achieve my goals. And the question is, where do you want to play in my and you know, me achieving those goals? Um, so I, I would see that as a superpower, but can also be something that's a little disruptive. So I have to manage that. Um, but that would be the thing I, 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 I you know, rely on or I, I'll go to in that. I'm, I'm an earthbender in that sense. I like that answer. I, so I actually get this question quite a bit in interviews or, you know, what is it that makes a great CSM or a great CS leader or someone who's very successful in, in customer success? And the two words that you used are two that I love and, and I think are incredibly appropriate and probably the most important, which are grit and resilience, right? It, it's not always going to be an easy job. There's, there's high highs and there's low lows, but it's that resilience, that ability to bounce back, that ability to get off of, you know, a very difficult call or from a difficult meeting and to be able to put on, you know, that smile and, you know, not let it, you know, let it roll off of your shoulder as you go into uh, your next customer meeting or your next uh, you know, leadership meeting to be able to uh, really overcome and, and be resilient in those situations. Definitely. Um, learning how to manage yourself in those scenarios, because I'm sure we've all, anyone in customer success, as you, as you said, you've had that call with a customer that if you let it can ruin your entire day. So how do you have uh, or build for yourself a safe place and safe mechanisms to vent very quickly? so you can then pivot and get back to work. You know, it's one of these things, when one door closes, you gotta be looking for the next door. You gotta be looking for the window or, or trying another door. You have to have that resilience, but in order to do that, you do need to allow yourself some space and have some avenues to vent, to get that out. You are human, but you can't let that become an excuse for not pressing forward. Sure. Yeah, and that, that emotional regulation is so important, right? Being able to deal with those emotions, being able to, to recognize why you're feeling a certain way and then to be able to process them and, and move on. Uh, that's a skill that I will say that both of my toddlers lack. Uh, <laughs> emotional regulation, so that's something we're still working on. Uh, lots of tantrums in the, the Williams household, but uh, fortunately, hopefully as they, they grow up, uh, they'll, uh, they'll be able to regulate those mu m emotions the same way that a, a great CSM or CS leader does. Don't be fooled. I have tantrums all the time. They're just down on <laughs> My dog sees them. Um, some other people, I have some peers that occasionally I would just say, listen, I just need someone to hear. And so that will happen. You just have to learn what's the right space. When is the right time to do that? Up until then, you have to keep yourself composed and keep pressing. Yeah, I like that. Um, if there's anything that you'd like to to leave the, the audience with before we, we break... Uh, any parting wisdom? The the thing I would love to share uh, is kind of going back to what I mentioned before. Customer success isn't something it's new, but it really isn't. And what I mean by that, it, there's some there's some maturity in the space that has absolutely occurred. Where we have known methodologies now, we have known processes, we know what data we need, we know what KPIs, but we've always taken care of customers, and so. Whether you've been a customer or you've worked with customers in any way, shape or form, you have been in or around customer success. And so if you're looking to get into this space, get into this profession and all of its different jobs within this space called customer success, just bring what you already have to the table. 
the key asset to anyone in customer success is their knowledge of their particular industry. Whatever that industry is, whatever that vertical happens to be, that knowledge of that industry, of those customers, is your most valued asset. We can add on everything else. We can teach everything else. But coming in with that prior knowledge of what it means to be a customer in that space is so invaluable. Thank you.